From left to right, we have the non-slip loop knot, snap swivel in the center, and the quick snap on the outside. We're gonna go over pros and cons to each, when and where to use each one, and other examples of each setup. So to start this off, we're doing the non-slip loop knot. This is very popular for fly fishermen, and why? Well, exactly like the name says, it's a non-slip, so you're always gonna have this open loop in here and it won't close off. Opposed if you have like a regular knot, it's gonna be super tight and it's gonna be restricted. This will give you the most amount of movement. Best presentation is what it's gonna give you. And also it's less discreet. If you were to have a snap swivel on here, you're gonna have more stuff hanging up on it. You're gonna get more weeds. And then if you're fishing trout, smarter fish, walleye, they're gonna notice it. So this is probably your better bet. So basically it has the best action, but if you get hooked up with a dirty pike, you're probably gonna get broke off. Now some other quick examples you can use with the non-slip is the Texas rig, very popular. And another one is any kind of a jig head too, because you're gonna be snap jigging in the bottom and it's gonna give it the most amount of movement too. So that's three presentations you can use with the non-slip loop knot. And again, you can still use other snap swivels and whatever you wanna use, but this is the most optimal way, I think, is what it's gonna give you for fishing. Whoa, hold up, we almost forgot one of the best ways to use a non-slip loop knot is on a bait hook as well. Cause if you're putting a greasy grub on this, any kind of a worm, a shiner, you wanna have it just the bait and have nothing else. It mo it'll mo look the most realistic in the water column for presentation, right? Because if they're looking at a worm or bug or anything, that's all they're used to seeing. So you definitely don't want to run a snap or anything else. So bait hooks, I would definitely recommend. So now we're going to go over a couple flaws, which are actually very important. And you don't want to be using any kind of a knot, like a polymer knot, non sloop like any kind of knot in this kind of situation because they're going to break. If you look closely at the spoons, they got a sharp edge. And lots of times you guys have probably realized if you're not using a snap or any kind of a, any, like a quick snap or a snap swivel, you're gonna be breaking off your line or it's gonna tear it or it's gonna to start to fray and when you get a big hook or a big hook, when you get a big fish, it's just gonna break off. So it's a no go for tying to spoons. And one more thing too, another one that's very important is crankbaits, jerkbaits, anything essentially with um, a snap ring. Because if it doesn't matter how it goes, if you keep looking, no matter how you pull it, eventually it's gonna get, I don't know if it's gonna focus, but right in, the, the, right in the spot where they open and close to get the ring on and off, it's gonna get in there, it's gonna pinch, and it's going to break over time. And there are some other kind of split rings you can get. I don't use them, but they're ovals, so it does help direct it a little bit. But eventually, I think it's gonna, I don't know, I think it's a bad idea. I definitely recommend using a quick snap on any kind of a crank or a jerk. Now for the snap swivel, these are super easy. This will be a quick part of the session here. The best time to use a snap is, in my eyes, for two hooks. This, the spoon, because it's always going back and forth, right? It's going through the water, it's going through the water. You're going to eventually get line twists. That's what's going to happen. So the barrel swivel here prevents that. It's the whole idea. And if you're not running one, eventually it's just going to twist, twist, twist. It may do a complete lap, wrap, and it's going to keep twisting. And then everybody gets it once in a while, and it's backlash. And I've had that, especially with braid. It just frays right up, and it makes a complete mess. So any kind of a twisting hook that goes through the, that goes through the water, I definitely recommend running a uh, barrel swivel. And the scent, you don't have to have it down here. You could still put a quick snap down here and then make your leader and then put the barrel swivel up farther if you want. Depends how you want to run your rig for that day. And another hook, which you want to use. Another hook you, you can use for the snap swivels are spinners, obviously, because they're spins through the water. Same thing, you're going to get a lot of line twists. So somewhere along the lines, you want a barrel swivel, barrel swivel whether it's one like this, or you put it up the line a little bit, either if you wanna make a leader with fluorocarbon or whatever you think. So that's pretty much the pros for this. Now I'm gonna tell you guys the cons for using a snap swivel. So now we're gonna get into the cons. There's not many, but it's actually very notable. If you guys are running some jerks or cranks, they're just buoyant enough to float. So any extra weight will drag them down a little bit. So the extra snap may start it may start to make it sink. So then it'll screw with the action a little bit is what it's gonna do. So you don't really want that in extra weight or anything like that on any kind of a jerk or a crank. Another thing too, if you're fishing pike or you know, if you're in the States, bass, lots of people fish bass, you're always casting in the weeds looking for them. So with this extra hardware here, you're gonna be hanging up a lot more with weeds and everything. It's gonna be gumming up a lot easier opposed to not having one on. So that's a, kind of a flaw. It's gonna hang up a little bit more, may screw up the action of the lure. Not too many things, but it's something you should be aware of. And as well, if you're fishing uh, trout, you do not wanna put a snap on here. They're smart fish. They're just gonna look at it and swim the other way. So definitely for uh, reasons like that too. If you're fishing smarter fish, 
don't use that. Now we're doing quick snaps. I love these. They're so quick, they're easy to change, and they're more discreet. That's why I like them. Now to start out, the best type of places to use these are on crank baits and jerk baits. Going back to the split rings, because now you're going to have the most amount of movement, right? Because you don't want the line like we were talking about earlier. It's going to be restricted and it's going to break. But with the snap on there and then the quick snap, or the snap ring, sorry, and the quick snap, you have the most amount of movement while it's going up and down. So for cranks and jerks, these are absolutely perfect. And what I also do when I'm running these, I put my leader, usually up six pound, 100% fluorocarbon, and then I'll put a barrel swivel up at the top. So then it's kind of the snap swivel, but it's a better design and it's less discreet. And another good thing about this, if you have kids, you don't, you don't wanna be tying knots all day long too. So kids can change these very easily. You just pop them open and then you close them. And it's really quick and it's easy. And another thing, obviously, it's a little small, smaller than, here, we'll get it again, the snap sole. So you guys can compare. There's way less hardware. So for doing trout, like I use these little guys for trout and everything too. So it's it's a quarter, nah, we'll say it's a third less of the hardware, which is a big deal, especially when you put the barrel sole up at the far end of the line. So it makes a pretty big difference. Now, other hooks you guys can use these for is awesome. And I love ice fishing. So any kind of a jigging spoon, anything like that, it, lots of ice hooks. And then the, the jigging, this, this is the Acme Hyper Rattle. So you can use these too. And it's way quicker for changing too. Because you don't want to be tying to some of these ice hooks either. Because once again, it's hard metal here. So you're going to be fraying your line and it's going to split. And then these two, like so most of them come with split rings. So it's just a quick bada bing, bam, boom. And then, you, and then you switch them out and it's way quicker. And once again, it's more about movement with these more so. And in the past, I'm not going to discourage anyone from doing this too. I Sometimes I'm lazy. I do run the quick snaps on the jig heads too. And I've caught still walleye and everything on them. So it's just personal preference more than anything. Now, as far as cons, there's really not that much. Other than if you're going to get a pike on there, you may get broke off if you don't have a leader or a snap to give that little bit extra hardware. It's still like it's still it's still less discreet than a snap swivel, but this isn't that bad. It's not a huge difference because if you compare just a quick snap here, then you look at your snap rings, your hooks. Does it actually really even matter that much? I don't even know. And maybe one more thing too, since you got a little bit of hardware at the front, it's going to be snagging on some weeds a little bit easier and catching up. But all in all, this is my go-to. I love using quick snaps and it's easy. So hope that helped. Quick video. If you guys like it, help me out. Subscribe. Thanks a lot.